everyone i'm chirag and welcome to part 3.9 of the tutorial series on aws cloud formation so guys in this tutorial we will go through one of the intrinsic function that is base64 so basically the intrinsic function base64 returns the base64 representation of the input string and typically this function is used to pass encoded data to amazon ec2 instances by the way of the user data property so now if we want to run commands during the launch of an EC2 instance, then we can use or define the user data. So let's get started. And as you can see on my screen, I have defined this template and this is the template that we are going to use within this video. But before I take you through this template, let's have a look at the syntax of the base64 function. So to define or use the base64 function, we can say fn double colon base64 colon the value that we want to encode and another way of defining or using base64 function is by using exclamation base64 colon the value that we want to encode okay so the second one that is on line number 36 is the short form of defining or using the base64 function so these are the two ways that you can use to define or use the base64 function so now let's go through the cloud formation template that i have here on my screen so here basically we are creating the EC2 instance using this cloud formation template and here we have the parameters where user is going to select the instance type from the allowed values that is t2.micro, t2.small and t2.large and then we have resources. So what kind of resources that we need here? So on line number 16 we are defining the logical ID. So basically each resource has the unique logical ID and then on line number 17 we are defining the what should be the type of that resource. So here we are saying AWS EC2 instance. Why AWS EC2 instance? Because here we want to spin up or launch an EC2 instance. That's the reason we are defining AWS EC2 instance. And once we define the type we can define the properties on line number 18. So here we need to pass on few parameters that is instance type. So here uh, the input or the value would come from the parameters that the user will select and then we have image ID. So here I have this Ubuntu image ID that I have defined over here. Finally on line number 21 we have the key name uh, that is the PEM file to SSH or login into the instance. So here I have defined flask uh, which I already have access to. Now here while defining the key name you need to make sure that you have access to this file and you have downloaded this PEM file uh, on your system so that you can SSH or login into that instance. Okay, so that's basically key name and finally we have the user data property on line number 22. Okay, so basically we want to run a couple of commands during the launch of an EC2 instance. Now user data will accept uh, the input in the form of base64 representation. Okay, so for that here we have the function that is a base64. So that is something that we are using over here. Okay, that is function double colon base64 followed by the another function that is for substitute function. Why we are using substitute function? It's because here if you look at line number 29, then here uh, we want to substitute this dir name with the uh, specific value at the runtime. So that's the reason we are using the substitute function over here. So here what we are saying that we want to uh, run the update command, then we want to install docker, and then we want to create a directory uh, with specific name. Okay, and the name should be uh, the combination of AWS tech name, region, and the custom directory string. Okay, so to form that uh, string, we are using the join function over here. And then at the runtime, this dir name would be replaced or substituted by the specific value at the runtime that we have defined over here. Okay, so this is how basically you can use the base64 function. Now here uh, one thing you need to keep in mind that uh, while we are using two functions right so here uh, we are using base64 and the substitute function so while we are using uh, two functions we should use the full function name for at least one of the function else it will throw the syntax error okay so keep this thing in mind and apart from that uh, this cloud formation template will spin up this instance in the default vpc with the default security group so now we are all set to uh, go back to the cloud formation console and create this tag and here we will select the upload a template file and we are going to choose a file and in my case uh, it's user data.yaml so i'm going to select that and click on open then i will say next now here you need to provide this tag name so i would say base64 
and within parameters we have to select the instance type parameter so here i will say t2.micro and then i will click on next now in step 3 we will leave all the option as it is and then we will scroll down to click on next and scroll down again and click on create stack so now the stack creation is in progress let's wait for it to complete so now as you can see the stack creation is completed now we can click on resources and click on this physical id so this is basically the instance id that this cloud formation template has created so here as you can see here we have the uh, instance that is up and running and now we can copy the public ipv4 address and ssh into that instance so here i would say ssh hyphen i followed by flask.pem that i have defined in the cloud formation template okay and i have access to that file so ssh hyphen i hyphen i stands for the identity file and flask.pem is the identity file followed by the username now since we are using uh, ubuntu operating system the username would be ubuntu at the rate uh, the ipv4 address and then we will say enter now here we need to say yes and now as you can see we are into this instance okay so let me clear this and let me do ls so here as you can see on my screen it has created a directory with the same name that we have defined so it says base64 now if we look at the cloud formation template then it says aws stack name now if you remember then the stack name that i have entered was base64 followed by the aws region name uh, that is hyphen uss1 followed by the uh, static string that is custom dir so here as you can see here we have the custom dir as well so this is basically the directory that we want to create okay and as you can see the substitute function have substituted this dir name with the specific value that is base64 uss1 uh, custom dir okay now apart from that uh, we had also asked to install docker right so let me check if docker is installed or not so i will simply say sudo docker so as you can see the docker is installed as well so by default docker does not come pre-installed uh, with the ubuntu operating system but using this user data on line number 28 uh, we are able to successfully install the docker functionality or the service as well on the ubuntu operating system during the launch time okay now apart from that let's go back to the uh, ec2 management console and select the instance and let's click on actions and say instance settings and let's click on this user data so here as you can see this is the same user data or the script that we wanted to run during the launch of the ec2 instance okay so here you can also modify this uh, user data but apart from that if you look at this uh, last line that is uh, make directory and here we have the actual value instead of uh, the data name that we have defined over here okay so here basically substitute function is working to basically fetch the dynamic value and substitute it at the runtime so guys this is how you can use the base64 function in your aws cloud formation template as per your requirement so guys that's all i wanted to cover as a part of this video until that time if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time